All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome um, to our uh, practice session for today with um, uh, Sri Yano uh, Vangura. And we're really honored to have, have her here and you know, really excited for today. Um, just a quick note, my name is Atoy Ramos Remin, I'm Director of Programs at the Laundromat Project. And uh, just a quick note, there's captions available. Just make sure if you need those to click below and turn them on. Um, and we'll be recording this session. So if you don't wanna be in the video, uh, just turn it off. And uh, uh, right now, so thank you. Um, and so it's a pleasure and honor to introduce Free um, from Ontol RVA. So Free Jano uh, Bangura, it's an independent historical strategist and portal keeper from Richmond, Virginia. The final battleground where the South was defeated at the end of the Civil War in 1865. She's the founder of Ontol RVA, Ontol X, and, the, and Ontol Tours. Free is a George Soros Equality Fellow with Open Society Foundation and Transcontinental Monument uh, Lab Fellow at a WPA Fellow with the United States Department of Arts and Culture, the co-chair of Richmond Regi Regions Tourism uh, BLK RVA Initiative, uh, and serves as the chair of the City of Richmond's History and Culture Commission. In 2021, uh, President Julius Mata Bayo uh, graciously welcomed Free Home uh, as a DNA test, a descendant of the uh, me, uh, nation in Sierra Leone, West Africa, granting her dual citizenship and tasking uh, her as ambassador for diasporic returnees whose lineages survived generations of enslavement. Free has been credited as the originator of the International Commemorative Just Justice Movement, a liberation center ancestral remembrance strategy designed to stimulate the Black creative economy. Uh, many of her unique tactical urbanism and sacred street art projects have been featured in national outlets such as Next City, BBC, Al Jazeera, PBS, NPR, Boston Globe, New York Times, and New Yorker Magazine. So without further ado, uh, I'm so honored to have you here today and welcome. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Thanks for taking time out today to be with us for the Laundromat Projects Abolition Workshop Series. This uh, dope series is really curated by Piper Anderson, who invited me to be able to talk to you all today about ancestral remembrance and how it intersects with social justice through the lens of something I call commemorative justice. So I have a couple of treats for you. I want this to be very interactive. And I know that I'm talking to the type of audience where, first of all, if you're here, it's because you're meant to be here. And also it's evident that if you're affiliated with the Laundromat Project and you heard about this, then that means in some way you're anchored to basically living your life in a way that's in service to the community, to the ancestors, to your family. And all of these things are at the top of your list of things to do to get better at and to share with others. So the very first thing we're gonna talk about today is five things. This is the name of the workshop. It's the Portal Keeper edition. And when I do my work in Richmond, Virginia, it's called Untold RVA. RVA is short for Richmond, Virginia. It is, as you all just heard, the capital, former capital of the Confederacy, but it's also a place where up to four in 10 Black people whose ancestors came from enslavement can trace at least one of their ancestors to the auction blocks in Richmond, Virginia. Many of them are unmarked, and I took the responsibility in my lifetime as being one of the people to make sure that people can know more about that ancestral journey, but most specifically as a nation builder and as a Pan-Africanist, it's very important to me that people know that there is a pathway to connect this work back to the continent of Africa. My lineage is from Sierra Leone on both sides. My mother is Timene, my father is Kru, and I found those things out through DNA testing. So I wanna encourage everyone to make every possible way to honor their ancestors and find out where they come from 
at the top of their priority list for this year, next year and beyond. So if we can move to the next slide, I wanna share with you guys some of the language um, that we're gonna be uh, talking about. The first slide here though, is an example of the work that I do in Richmond, Virginia. So we, I'm sure you've heard about Monuments Avenue, which is where this um, very well known, but deeply uh, troubling and problematic statue of the Confederate general, I'm not even gonna waste time with his name, uh, but the youngins in my city, along with the support of the elders that carried this torch before them, were successful in being able to put pressure on the government and the uh, gatekeepers here to take that statue down about two weeks ago. So before that, though, we uh, had this terrible lack of memorialization. And so I came up with this strategy that was really coming from the brilliant ideas that my ancestors blessed me with. Um, I really have to credit them for giving me these innovations to be able to upend and basically the way I describe it is I'm like a hacker, you know, I'm a monument hacker. And I found a way to be able to use very low cost, high visibility ways to help people understand that there are ancestors just like them that did the work just like theirs. And I had to figure out which was the best way to make sure people could receive these things without having to go into a museum and without having to be like, someone that's gonna take time and read all these very, very small print signs along the road. So I came up with this strategy and um, thanks to the ancestors, they put it into my heart, mind and spirit that if I use paper in the sense of, uh, it's called wheat paste and you use like flour, sugar and water as an adhesive to put onto regular 20 pound paper. And I just made sure to get the dimensions exact to the light poles in my city. And so every single one of those light poles becomes a monument. And the reason why I felt that the ancestors gave me that innovation is because I was thinking about them and giving thanks for them going across the bridge to my office. And I saw that the light poles are exactly the same every time and that no one was doing anything with the beautiful architecture of them. And so on all four sides, there's imagery and uh, the project is called Keepers of the Light. I've been um, grateful to be able to have put them up into different cities across the country and in the world. And now um, I'm hoping to be able to extend them instead of saying this is untold RBA in your city, now it's untold X and we're going through a relaunch. And for the beginning of uh, next year, we'll be able to come to a city near you or where you are if you call and at no cost to the community will be able to actually help you honor your ancestors. The cool thing about this innovation though is that I found a way to put a telephone number on there that you can call and learn about the person who's being depicted on the uh, light pole. And a lot of times the people are not someone that you would have ever thought had someone to illustrate their lives in any way, because these are the self-determined ancestors uh, who no one really wanted their memories to ever be preserved. So it takes a lot of um, artists and uh, collaborators to be able to even get the sounds and the, the soundscapes and stuff up. And then folks are even putting um, up the wheat paste and stuff. So it's a really um, people powered effort. And it's been, um, really deeply rewarding to be able to see them go up and begin to push back against the systemic inequity that um, permeates our memorial landscape at this time. So um, I wanna go to the next slide though and talk to you about a portal keeper. So what is a portal keeper? A portal keeper is someone who has specific work to inspire the frontline change makers in their community with the power of the ancestors upon whose shoulders we stand. So that person, a portal keeper, I'm a portal keeper. And when I developed the notion of portal keeping and I tried to really think about how this can be a replicable model for other cities and how I could really take the things that I've learned from my own work and encourage others in other cities, other countries, other states, other communities, I had to really do a deep dive on exactly what place I have in my community. And I thought about it and it's like, I, I've never been a manager. I've never really had a job outside of entrepreneurship. And I have connections and, and friendships and colleagues that do amazing change-making work, but that's not necessarily the space that I occupy. So it's very important to know 
the details of what a portal keeper is. Again, it's someone whose specific work is to inspire the frontline change makers with the power of the ancestors upon whose shoulders we stand. So that means that a portal keeper is really like, if you think about it in business terms, it's like the business to business person. So that portal keeper is making sure that whoever that most important change maker is in that city, they need to be fortified. They need to be fortified by the ancestors in a way that they can figure out the best way to approach the community with these ancestral narratives. I wouldn't really know how to reach the community in the ways that the frontline change makers would, but I do know how to relate to those change makers and inspire them with the ancestors that did very similar work to the work that they're doing right now that they know no knowledge of, never learned in school, but at least by them connecting to these ancestral narratives that are deliberately submerged in their communities, now they can be inspired by that and not feel so alone. The next slide is gonna talk about the flip side of the portal keeper realm, and that's the lamplighters. The lamplighter is a frontline change maker who, whose community work is made stronger through their connection to the portal keepers and the ancestors. So in essence, a lamplighter is who the portal keeper is sowing the seeds into. The lamplighter is directing the community to these ancestral narratives, not because they're gonna take the time to become a historian or a spiritualist themselves, but because of the relationship. So we all do our part to further this movement of inspiration that our ancestors want us to have by the lives that we really need to know about so that we can be fortified by their accomplishments in the past. Then that way, our shoulders become stronger because we're standing on their shoulders. And then in turn to that, the youngins, when they grow up, become strong shoulders for the next generation to stand on. So the lamplighters and portal keepers connect to the ancestral realm on one side and the youngins who are coming up on the other. So let's go to the next slide. This is uh, what I call the conspiracy of good people. I love this quote so much. If you guys remember uh, Sesame Street and uh, public broadcasting, PBS was like, you know, on all the time when I was a kid. And I'm sure that you all know that there was a really, really innovative team of people that really came up with PBS. So this man was one of the founders of PBS, Charles Corral. And in a um, keynote address that he was giving in North Carolina for graduating uh, collegiate students, he once said, I have become faintly aware that there is in this state and in this nation and in this world, an association of men and women who, while they may not even know each other, might still be called a conspiracy of good people. I'm a person that actually had to contend with the notion of being accused of conspiracy in my earlier years of adulthood. And I had to wear that F on my chest for the rest of my life. And when I saw this quote, it helped me to understand that conspiracies of good people are exactly what we want. We want those networks of interconnection so that people can encourage one another with the strengths of what they do best. But right now, I want to show you all a video. It's five minutes long. It was produced by Association of Independence and Radio, and it tells a little bit about my work in Richmond and the people that I learned to cut my teeth with in this city so that we can begin to start this ball rolling for Untold RVA. This, I believe, was filmed in 20, maybe 14 or 15. But please begin. Thank you. There's this space in Richmond, and it used to be the city hanging grounds back in the early 1800s. It also was given to enslaved people as a place to bury their dead. Nobody was caring about the history of this place. People were like, take your asphalt off my ancestors. To take responsibility for one's ancestors after they've passed is something that should be looked at with great honor. So now the pavement has been taken off. It's a victory of the people, a self-determined effort. There's no one who can tell anyone going down there that you don't have the right to take care of your own ancestors. We do.
One moment, please. Hi, Rodney. My name is Free Egwin Femi. I was calling you about the um, the Truthful History Heals Monument Project. Is there yeah. anyone I could speak to about that this morning? Sure, I can try to do best as I can. Okay, well, who's curating that space? I had the opportunity to go to school on a full scholarship for a violin. I was classically trained violinist from the age of two, ranked number one in the state of Virginia playing my violin on the golf course as the golfers ride by, my mother, play, play, and I'm just like, oh my God. One day I realized my life is gonna be gone before I live. I gotta stop this. And then when I told my parents, they flipped out. I said, well, fine, I'm going to Virginia State. And that's when I went, never realizing that my ancestors were within a half a mile of my dorm, who had like been in the oldest black, free black community in the country. So as changing lanes, when I left Virginia State, um, I was really deeply rooted within black culture. So this is the original sketch of the portal. Uh, I wanted to have the center image to represent the picture of the altar at my house. This is the portal. And the portal shows all of these people on the ancestor altar. And we're putting them in locations where people can actually go there and learn about the people that are on here. No, we decided not to put it down there because we feel it's too low. His name is Farid Allen Shinsius. I used to see him around and be like, who is this dude? I knew that he was a carpenter. When I finally got a chance to meet him, I realized, you know, there was work for us to do. Oh, she's a doer and I'm a doer. We do. I drew those portals out and showed it to him, and he came and brought that thing down to the canal, and I looked at it, and I was in shock because it's exactly what I drew. We stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. You need to be able to know you're living in a city with people who pushed past and, ac and accomplished so much. There's no monuments to them. And their lives need to matter. I'm a fourth generation spiritualist. My mom didn't tell me that my whole family was African spiritualists. Although she was raised this way from birth all the way until the time she met my dad, she did not want me to take after that family dynamic. But the wider conversation that you just offered to us to curate a gallery. I thought I was striking out on my own, and all along, I was doing what our family had been doing for countless generations. This sign explains to people how they would use the um, space. Uh, they come with an open heart and a willingness to do good. My mom, when she passed two years ago, she was on her last moments on earth. I remember I started singing this song, and it's a song that you sing to open up the portal when a person is transitioning. It goes, Aumba waori, aumba waori, awa osun, awa uma, le tioma, le yawo, kara onu, kawe. When I got to the end, I said, Ma, you want me to sing it again? She goes, Yes. You leave that to me where to bury you. I'm not burying you in some crazy ass crypt. I said, you know, I'm gonna be down here all the time. I would really rather just go ahead and inter some of my mom's ashes over there. When I come down there, my mom is overlooking the whole scene. Well, wow, y'all, that is really interesting to see that with you today. Um, I don't watch it often. And when I do, it just shows me how far this work has come. Now, my father is actually in the other tree, interred there on the burial ground. 
And um, just thank you so much for being here at this time. I want to make one moment, carve space for us, for each one of you to just close your eyes for a moment and think of one person that you know that had the highest character and say to them in this moment, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. May it be so. So now that we have that bond across the veil, we need to make sure that no matter any time that you begin to work with the ancestors and learn more about their role in our lives, it's important that you ground yourself by that connection with your own lineage because you should never do for community ancestors what you haven't done for your own family. So let's move to our self-assessment. I'd love to see what happens at the end with everybody. Can we open up? Oh yes, let's look at this quote again. Let's read it again now that you've had a chance to see how my conspiracy of good people with Baba Farid and Mama Beth and all the elders here that strengthen me and support me at every turn. I have become faintly aware that there is in this state and in this nation and in this world, an association of men and women who while they may not even know each other might still be called a conspiracy of good people. We are a conspiracy of good people. We don't know each other by name, but some forces brought us together in this moment. And I'm grateful for you. Let us begin to take the assessment together. Now, I believe the link is in the chat. So it will help if you go ahead and enter your email address so that you can um, put your answers in, but I'm still gonna read them out loud. So the first one is, could I be a portal keeper? Let me find out. Everyone deserves to learn about our community ancestors, but portal keepers have a path of our own. Is this work that you're being called to do? If so, how do you know if this is your season to step forward? Now's your chance to see what's really good. Join us for Untold X presents five things, Portal Keepers Editions, Free Bangura. You can take the self-assessment of positive commemorative justice affirmations. May our collective work inspire generations. Power to the people, may it be so. So zoop zoop your email in there and then you'll be able to continue with the questions and we'll go down the list. Well, I mean, put your email into the, yes, you can fill out the form while you're following. I believe they're going to give you the link right now. Click on that. It should open up the Google form. Or, okay, I'm not sure. They're actually, I'm not sure if they're gonna give you the Google form link or if we're just gonna go through one at a time. But this the Google, is the question. The Google. The Google form is in the chat, folks can. Fantastic. Number one, I feel that it's my responsibility to be of good character and behave with the utmost self-respect because one day I wanna take my place among the wise elders of my family and or community. That concept is known in my ancestral matrilineal language of the Timene nation in Sierra Leone as Arieko Opino. Arpino means character. I mean, excuse me, Ar Arpino means good and Arieko means character. So if you answer like, absolutely, it's 20 points you give yourself. If it's 15 points for sounds about right, 10 points for let's just say I wouldn't rule it out, 10 points, five points is that doesn't resonate with me free. And the last one is absolutely not. So with Mama Shakila, our, well, my spiritual mother, Mama Shakila, and our portal keeper elder in the city of Richmond. I will move to the next question because we've got four more to go. Question two of the five things, portal keepers edition. As a portal keeper, I've met some very brave and talented people who go above and beyond to help me keep these portals shining bright. 
They generously support my commemorative justice work with their archival activism, community design, and a wide range of creative resistance. These dedicated people are the lamplighters and we stand shoulder to shoulder in the spirit of self-determination. In Matimene language from West Africa, Sierra Leone, that's known as Onikan Sobe, self-determination. Onikan Sobe. Absolutely, sounds about right. Let's say I wouldn't rule it out. Doesn't resonate, absolutely not. Next question. This affirmation is about honored ancestors. Ampamanso Abaki. Ampamanso Abaki. I think about the honored ancestors daily. I even built a sacred space for them in my home. When I think of their bravery, it makes me wanna find new ways to thank them. One of the best parts of being a portal keeper is that I get to inspire the lamplighters with untold stories of the ancestors who once did the same type of powerful community engagement they're doing now. This is the work I love to do the most. Absolutely, 20 points, sounds about right. 15, let's just say I wouldn't rule it out for 10. Doesn't resonate with me for five and absolutely not, who's that? Next question. I believe that portal keepers have an important role in the struggle for commemorative justice. Portal keeper projects lift up the untold stories of the past. And I have no doubt the ancestors will want our work to be fully funded. My portal keeper mission is to inspire as many change making lamplighters as I can. Tapant, ancestral wealth. Tapant actually means shells, like the shells that you see behind and the ones that are around the border, because not only are shells important as an oracle, but they're also representative of male and female, depending on the shape. And they're also very, very important because they were used as a monetary system. We could talk about that more once you come and check for me and we get a chance to journey further along in our path together. But absolutely not, sounds about right. Let's just say I wouldn't rule it out. That doesn't resonate or absolutely not. Wherever you weigh in on that, quick little thing. And then I believe we've got one more question. This affirmation deals with the ancestral sword bearer. Untis, untis, untis means the knife in feminine. When it comes to how my community reflects on its historical struggle for black freedom, I refuse to tolerate bureaucrats, politicians, and corporate figureheads who try to push agendas that undermine the will of the people and disrespect the ancestors at that. When they see me, they know they better not come out, of, come out with their foolishness because I'm not just a portal keeper, I'm a commemorative justice warrior and I do not play that. Absolutely, is that you? Sounds about right, 15 points. Let's just say I wouldn't rule it out for 10 and that doesn't resonate for five. Absolutely not is a zero. Now, after you've done all of your tabulations, you'll be able to figure out how many points you've earned. Let's go to the last part of this. Now, I need to read this from my phone because it's a little small here, but you should have access to it to see on your side. So could I be a portal keeper? Let me find out. Make sure you answered all five questions and that you gave yourself points for each question as follows. You remember the 20, 10, 5, 15, 0. Once you add up all your points, it's time to see how you weigh in. If you have from 0 to 25 points, then let's see what it has to say about you. Bob Marley said, when one door is closed, many more are open. There's, excuse me, that is my little puppy. Just a minute. Hush, friend. Come here, Jadena. I need to sit on my lap. Y'all want to say hi to Jadena? Say hi. There he is. 
Say hi to Dana, you're on cam camera. <laughs> okay. Um, I think his big sister is coming home from school. Okay, so Bob Marley said that when one door is closed, many more are open. There's power in knowing who you are, but there's freedom in knowing who you're not. Use this information to chart your unique and essential path forward and trust that just like the earth and wind and fire song says, you will find other kind that have been in search of you. Once you're good and connected, let's see what kind of magic we all can make together. And then we've got um, 30 to 60 total points. For being a portal keeper is not just a calling, it's also a teachable skill. If you come with an open heart and a willingness to do good, your path will appear before your very eyes. Stick around and don't give up. Be teachable and always try to be a blessing in your own special way. 60 to 85 points, 65 to 80 points is something about this path is calling you forward. If you're not already building a sacred space for your ancestors, that's a great step in the right direction. You're gonna have the most wonderful adventure contributing to this work alongside portal keepers of the world. Your gifts, talents, and abilities are amazing. Keep going. And then 85 to 100 total points. Wow, what a beautiful moment to be in the world together. Everyone who knows you can plainly see that you carry a whole lot of portal keeper energy wherever you go. There's no doubt about the impact that you've made in your community. Clearly your ancestors are pleased and your elders are pleased and because of your hard work, your community will continue to thrive. You're a visionary. Keep tapping into the power of your ancestrally inspired imagination. With the proper support and encouragement, your dreams for the future will surely come true. May the universe shower you with blessings. May it be so. Now, what happens if you got a low score and you're like, well, I just don't feel like a portal keeper. So let's talk about what it means to be a lamplighter. Remember we said that the lamplighters are the ones that connect to the portal keepers who connect to the ancestral realm, but the lamplighters are holding space for the people who are in the community and deserve the most, I guess the most benefit from all of this at the end of the day. Um, and so that essential link has to be supported. And let's learn more about the lamplighters. Let's take the lamplighter quiz. Guys, give me one second. I'm about to put this on, stop video and grab my charger. Being a social justice change maker is important but difficult work. Sometimes it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. At times it feels like you're all alone and you've heard people talk about how they feel stronger when they call upon their ancestors and consult with their elders, but where are the safe spaces to learn what to do? If someone takes the time to guide you on this path, what can you offer them in return? Join us for Untold RBA Presents Five Things, Portal Keepers Edition with Free Bangura. You can take the self-assessment of positive commemorative justice affirmations to help you begin to understand the special role of a lamplighter. May our collective work inspire generations. Power to the people, may it be so. So let's see what it says about being a lamplighter. Number one, I believe that there's nothing more important than making sure that young people in my community are safe healthy and supported. They need to know more than just the history they're taught in school. I want to introduce them to our community portal keepers whose untold stories of historical black freedom can inspire them at a young age. 10 points, 15 points, 20 points, five points or no points based on where you fall within the spectrum of answers that are given for that question. Let's try question two. There we go, I'm plugged back in. I am consistent in my community work. I have formed healthy relationships with residents, and elders, and my peers who stand shoulder to shoulder with me as we each do our work to make the world a better place than what it was when we got here. 
I can walk into all different types of environments and be greeted with respect because I know everyone deserves the same level of respect in return. That means in Timene, Ayaki, Ayaki, respect. 20 points, 15, 10, five, or zero, depending on where you fall within the spectrum of answers for the self-assessment. Let's go to question three. So I might not be the most creative or spiritual or cultural or academic person, but it's one thing, if it's one thing I know, it's how to get the bag. I know how to find money for people out here making the world a better place. I'm not ashamed to ask people to donate or support to important community work. I'll do all I can as a lamplighter to make sure portal keepers continue to bring forth the untold ancestor stories to inspire people as much as possible. 20 points, 15 points, 10 points, five or zero. Anbater, anbater. That is the Timene word for a contribution that you make to the spiritual community because you're grateful for what you have gained when you come forward and seek guidance and ancestral depth to lift up your work and to propel you forward. Anbater, that means the bag but it's a spiritual bag, it's a specific type of bag. Question four. As I learn more untold stories about the struggle for black freedom, I'm realizing that everyday people should not have to read books in order to know. This is their legacy and historical event organizers should never treat them like an afterthought. As a lamplighter, it's my responsibility to help people feel safe and welcome to participate in cultural events around our community. These experiences might be new and unfamiliar to them, but when they see spirit dancers use their own bodies to call forth the ancestors with the rhythms and the beat, it is beautiful to witness the audience connecting to the frequency on a deeper level. I stampa. I stampa. That means spirit dancers and timine. Absolutely 20, 15 sounds about right, 10, five and zero. Okay, I think we have one more maybe. Yes. My pot mobai. My pot mobai. Chief Cook. One of the ways I show up for my community is to make sure to feed people well. I don't just offer snacks. I like to see folks break bread together. If cooking isn't my talent, I'll find people who put love into their food and give them whatever they need to fix meals for the community. When people are blessed with a plate of sacred food prepared by the hand of an anointed cook, this is a very special moment that opens the door for the ancestors to speak. Mapat, mabai, mobai. Mapat, mobai. That means chief cook, head chef, somebody who knows how to work that pot. So 20 points, 15, 10, five, or zero, depending on where you fall on the spectrum for that question. I think we're pretty much to the end of the five. Now, mind you, these are not the only qualities and attributes of a lamplighter or a portal keeper, but in the interest of time and keeping with the theme of the untold RBA five things, I just wanted to share with you five of them that mean the most to me and in the ways that have been able to um, really resonate in my spiritual and cultural work in my community. And I'd be interested to see what other things that you all come up with as time goes on. Say hi to Dana. There he is, saying hi. It's a hologram today. <laughs> Can't see his ears right now though. Anyway, let's figure out what it has to say about being a lamplighter. So, so Dennis says hi. Somebody can you say hi? There he is. There he is. <laughs> All right, could I be a lamplighter? Let me find out. Make sure to answer all five questions and give yourself points for each question as follows. 25, 10, 15, and then the zero. So once you add up all your points, it's time to see how you weigh in. Zero to 25 points. 
Oh, wait a minute. Come, lamplighter. Yes, okay, it's kind of the same. Bob Marley said, when one door is closed, many more are open. There is power in knowing who you are, but there's freedom in knowing who you're not. Use this information to chart your unique and essential path forward and trust that just like the Earth, Wind and Fire song says, you will find other kind that have been in search of you. Once you're good and connected, let's see what kind of magic we can all make together. I think this answer really speaks to people that may be earlier on their journey or they're moving to a community that they don't know as many people. It just means that you've got a wonderful evolution to look forward to as you deepen in your work and you build your relationships with community members and you find some portal keepers to link with. And if you can't find anywhere you are, you can always hit me free at untoldrva.com and we can see if we can make something shake together. 30 to 60 points. Being a lamplighter is not just a calling, it's also a teachable skill. If you come with an open heart and a willingness to do good, your path will appear before your very eyes. Stick around, don't give up. Be teachable, always be a blessing in your own special way. I guess that's true for all of us, no matter where we fall on the spectrum. 65 to 80 points. Something about this path is calling you forward. You're gonna have the most wonderful adventure contributing to this work alongside the portal keepers of the world. Your gifts and talents and abilities are amazing. Keep going. Now 85 to 100 points. Wow, what a beautiful moment to be in the world together. Everyone who knows you can plainly see that you're carrying a whole lot of lamplighter energy. There's no doubt about the impact you're making in your community. Clearly, your ancestors are pleased, your elders are pleased, and because of your hard work, your community will continue to thrive. With the proper ancestral support and encouragement, your vision for the future will surely come true. May the universe shower you with blessings for all that you do. May it be so. Let's go back one more time. This conspiracy of good people is getting thick as thieves, if you ask me. Let's read it again, because I really want you all to see what happens when you're able to knit together a network that's built on ancestors on the extreme that are obviously here because of the great creator's grace and mercy. And then here we are standing in this moment on their shoulders as portal keepers. And then on the other side of us are these people who are killing it out here, engaging their communities and making systemic change and taking it to these folks, dismantling systemic inequity with the sword out in one hand and the daggone bag of snacks on the other side. And then we've got the youngins that are looking at all of us and saying, I wanna be like them when I grow up. It's just like an unbreakable chain of dopeness. And so I have become faintly aware, say it with me. I have become faintly aware that there is in this state and in this nation and in this world, an association of men and women who while they may not even know each other might still be called a conspiracy of good people. We are a conspiracy of good people. Our work is work that was written in the book of life before we were ever even thought of. And now it's our time to be able to link forces and figure out how to dismantle a lot of the toxic energies that are thinking that we're never gonna get it together. But when we use these strategies that are replicable, no matter where you go, combining the undermining of this whole memorial industrial complex on the the streetscapes and make sure that we can basically hack the memorial landscape, you know, um, by putting up these monuments that are made of paper, that are for our ancestors, that are telling narratives that have been deliberately submerged. There's no longer a need for us to concentrate all of our energy on how to take down toxic images on our community. We can then at the same time as occupying those spaces and reclaiming those spaces, like 
what happened in Richmond at Marcus Davis Peters Circle, where the unnamed horseman has been now usurped and thrown to the ground and broken into a million pieces. We'll also, at the same time, being able to lift up our ancestors. My godfather told me several years ago that he did not want me to let my whole life pass me by. And all I had to show for was what I blocked, the uh, iniquity that I blocked from these infidels that constantly push to just disrespect us at every turn. He was like, look, that can't be all you're about. The picket signs, the don't do this, make sure you don't do that, all this, this and that. He said, like, you have to like let your dreams have a time to breathe. And that's when I began to think about how I could really get the ancestors, the space that they needed on the streetscape where people could walk by and not have to go into a museum and be inspired, pick up the telephone, hear a message, see a visual that looks just like them. And um, once we begin to really connect our dots like that, I think that we'll realize that together we have something that it's like the best hack ever created, if you ask me. Me connected to all the dope work that you're doing. Um, when people come home from incarceration and they wonder how they can get involved, this is the type of thing that we're talking about. Folks really need to have something to attach to. There are every single enslaved African who ever had shackles around their legs and neck felt the same thing all of us that felt when we were incarcerated. And we had those chains on our hands and feet around our waists. It's the exact same energy. There's no reason why people incarcerated shouldn't be learning about the victories of the people, especially those that come from before 1865, those that were enslaved. I wanna share with you this book. I don't know if this background thing is gonna let me do it. I'm gonna put it right in front of me. There we go. It's called a People's WPA. And it comes from the United States Department of Arts and Culture, which I am a fellow. I am super proud of these folks. We're gonna be doing some serious work to be able to figure out how to share this information, but to make sure that the information generates some revenue that'll help us do our self-determination work, our social justice work, and to stimulate the creative economy, the black creative economy specifically, because that's what I know. If you have an opportunity to go to usdac.us, check me out, yo. Can you see it? Let me see. There we go. Ah, this is a 25 poster series. All of them are beautifully illustrated. Each person came from around the country and they're all doing change making work of one kind or another. And we've reimagined the people's WPA to be very similar to how um, generations ago, people were supported by the United States and given a livable, beautiful livable salary to be able to add their secret sauce into the fabric of this country as an artist and as a culturalist and as a change maker. So we've imagined that that can happen again in 2021 and beyond. So it's like a blueprint and I'll be able to come and uh, interact with my fellow colleagues with that and help really lead the next wave of what we do with this manual. My own book is Commemorative Justice. The Commemorative Justice Movement was created as a way to be able to stimulate the creative economy by many of these very high visibility, low cost monuments that can help communities see themselves on their memorial landscape where they don't have to wait until $2 million is raised and only one person gets to contribute to a huge statue that for all we know, we could have made 20 million paper monuments with the cost of one Gilded Age statuary that is using the visual language of the Victorian era, which we don't even really need to do that. Well, how can we tell a tale of the oppressed using the language of the oppressor anyway? So I think that's probably the end of our time together. I'm gonna check. We've got seven minutes left. And if someone can give me, um, maybe like an opportunity to answer any questions that might be in the chat. I'm gonna do a little 
looking. If you have any questions, please put them quickly. Oh, what's the meaning of 1111? Great question. So, you know, some people that I talk to have also had the experience of when they were young and in elementary school and stuff where we used to say, oh, it's 11-11, make a wish. Well, that is the framework that I use for the portal. So if you look at the Untold X logo, it says, um, it has a hashtag. And the Untold X logo is actually an 11 and an 11 like this. And in the middle of it, the little area in the middle represents the portal where the space that the ancestors intersect. 1111 is a time that's like the portal gates, 11 and 11. These are all things that come from the untold RVA and untold X portal keeper, keepers of the light framework, which once you have a chance to read the book as it comes out, it will make more sense. But 1111 is a time where our ancestors are actually pushing through. Um, just like October 31st is known as the day when the veil between realms is the thinnest. And it's known as All Saints and All Souls Day. 1111 is the time every day, twice a day, where the ancestors are pushing a message through. So if you take that into your heart as being something that you believe, then your ancestors will be like, oh, I got a time I can communicate with him or her or them. So let me just kind of use that as pushing messages through. So pay attention to what you see around 1111. Let me see if I see any more questions I can answer in our last minutes together. Let's see. Wow, I'm seeing folks that are um, taking this beautiful, they're sending me direct messages about what their results were. And I see a lot of portal keepers and lamplighters in this room. So let me just give you a solidarity fist in the air and, and let you know how grateful I am for you all being here. I'm really looking forward to being able to take this portal keeper work outside of Richmond through Untold X. You're the first ones that have really had an opportunity to uh, experience this outside of Richmond in its fullness. Um, it took a lot. It takes a lot to be able to channel this stuff. I mean, it is, whew, chow. I'm sure you know from your own being portal keepers and lamplighters yourselves, but if indeed you hear something that you would like to learn more about, and if indeed this notion of supporting those on the other side of the wall that are incarcerated and deserve to know this information too, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at freeuntoldrva.com. I will be more than happy to send you guys that link in a way that may not have like some of the technical stuff that you might have had to contend with in this one. It's a little shorter link and it's more like a viewfinder version of what um, the affirmations and self-assessment gave us today. But I just wanna thank you guys so much for this time. And please, by all means, honor your ancestors. They are our first line of defense. We stand on their shoulders. This is not a joke or a game. They are literally from the lives that they lived prior to us being here right now, experience the exact same stuff. We don't always have books to read, so it's not like we can go and learn about the things that they did. But when you connect with portal keepers, who are the ones that are doing this excavation work of these narratives, you don't have to worry about starting this work on your own. Continue to concentrate on doing this amazing work of um, community engagement, and enriching people's lives by the things that you're able to spark in them and expose them to the portal keeper work by your relationships that you build with portal keepers in your community. Again, free at untoldrva.com. And I'm really hoping that you're able to come and visit us um, through the socials, but we're going through that rebranding now so that you can have a greater expansive experience with Untold X as it relates to portal keepers all around the world, not just specific to Richmond, Virginia. May the portal keeper work and lamplighter work that you're doing inspire generations. Power to the people, y'all. May it be so.